Hi there! How have you been? I hope you're having an incredible day. We're here again, your English learning buddies, Sir DJ and Dan, to make sure you will learn and we will enjoy our English lessons together. So make sure you have your pen and your paper ready, because once again, we will explore the wonders of this universal language. What are you waiting for? Let's get this started. Have you ever heard of the term two-way? Like a two-way radio. Unlike a broadcast receiver which only receives content, a two-way radio is a radio that can both transmit and receive radio waves. We can only listen to a regular radio. We can't converse with a radio DJ because he can't hear us. But when we are using two-way radio, we can send and receive messages. Two-way means allowing or involving movement or communication in opposite directions. Communication is also a two-way process. Have you experienced an online class while having internet problems? What are the most common words you say? Hello? Can you hear me? How about now? Is it better now? I, I can't hear you. All of a sudden, you're going to realize that you just wasted almost 10 minutes just saying hello. Your insistence on getting a response to a message is an attempt to engage in two-way communication with the person on the other end. Do you play badminton? Communication is like playing tennis, volleyball, or badminton. It's pointless to play it alone. Imagine, you throw the shuttlecock up in the air. Your eyes are focused on it, and you hit it with full force, only for it to hit the ground. What a waste of effort, right? We need to have somebody to hit it back to us. It's like this. You were excited to share something about your favorite show to your best friend. You even tried to mimic the character's action. Then you realize your friend is not paying attention and just replied with, uh, huh? That could be really annoying, right? Why? Because two-way communication wasn't present. Now, for us to try out this two-way communication, let's play a game. Dan will be saying something, and I want you to help me reply to what he said. Pay attention. Let's play What Did Dan Say? Help Sir DJ. Here's the first one. Hey. Do you remember that time when you, we went out to eat quick quick? You paid for my food. How much do I owe you again? Now, how should I reply to this one? Hmm. Let me try to recall what happened that day. Ah, I remembered I gave him 10 pesos. What should I say? A. Yeah, that's right. I gave you 20 pesos. B. Never mind, Dan. It was my treat. Or C. You mean you didn't pay? I didn't pay for it. Oh my, poor ate. I guess you're right. D. I should say that. Thank you. Never mind, Dan. It was my treat. I got you, fam. Remember, even the smallest good deed can really make someone feel loved. What about this next one? Oh no, I think I left my phone at home. Can I borrow yours? Hmm, what should I say to Dan? I think I still have a few credits on my phone and ringing Dan's phone will not affect my load. What should I tell him? Is it A? Sure thing, Dan. Let me put in your number. B? No way, man. I don't have to lose credit because you're irresponsible. Or C, nah, it's your fault. Is it A? Yeah, I think you're right. That would be the nicest way to answer and help my friend in need. Sure thing, Dan. What's the number you wanna call? 
Great work, guys. Let's try the last one. Hey, since you're my partner in our class activity, do you mind if I just copy your work? It's because I'm too tired from playing ML too much last night. Oh no, how should I respond to this one? If I agree, I get to do all the work. But if I say no to him, he might feel sad about it. What should I say? A. Yeah, sure, I got it covered, Dan. You can just copy my work. B. No way, man. I'm not your mom or anything. Or C. Let's do some brainstorming and who knows, maybe we can come up with something better if we do it together, partner. You're right. Thanks. I should say C. Hey, how about we do it together? Let's do some brainstorming and uh, who knows, maybe we can come up with something better if we do it together, partner. Remember guys, never take advantage of the person who does a lot for you. You're not required to set yourself on fire just to keep other people warm. The best thing to do is to help each other. Friendship, after all, is just like good communication. It's a two-way process. You did very well in our activity. Good work, guys. Now, why are we talking about these? Well, that's because for today, we are going to talk about the second communicative style, the consultative style. But before that, as always, let's have a recap of what we discussed last time. What is a communicative style? Correct. It refers to a specific form of language that a speaker utilizes which is characterized by a certain level of formality or informality. Can you remember the five communicative styles that we've mentioned? You're right. They are casual, consultative, formal, frozen, and intimate. These styles are important in speech making because it will help you choose the appropriate approach for specific events. Picking the correct style can help prevent misunderstandings and conflicts. What do we mean by the word casual? Impressive! The word casual means relax and unconcerned. You're doing well. Here's my next question. Who do you think are the people who usually utilize the casual communicative style? If you think that the casual communicative style is often used by friends and peers or people who are very familiar with each other and belong to a certain group, then you got that right. Just like what we discussed in the previous episodes, slang, vulgarities and colloquialism, informal contractions like ain't, to know gonna are normal in this type of speech style. The casual communicative style can be used in everyday conversation with friends, a personal message or a DM, as you may call it, blogs, tweets, and calls to your buddies. You did well. I am sure that if you keep the habit of writing down notes and reading them well, you'll definitely learn so many things in no time. Unlike the casual style, the consultative style is used in semi-formal communication. This is the normal style one uses when speaking to strangers or persons who are neither acquaintances, nor friends, nor relatives. Our sentences can be longer than the ones we use in the casual style. However, it is still spontaneous because the speaker does not usually plan what he or she wants to say. For example, Hello Ren, have you started preparing for the exam? No sir, I will start from tomorrow onward. Ren, the exam is already too close. Do you remember your marks in the last exam? It would be best if you improve this time. Why are you waiting until tomorrow to start preparing? I will start studying today, sir. Is there something wrong? Sir, actually, English is a little too tough for me. I think I have to practice my infinitives more. Also, I can study well on my own. That's why I'm still confused about a lot of things. Why haven't you told me this before? 
I would have helped you. Now, don't worry, I will help you with the basics. Come to the office after class at around 4 o'clock, and I'm going to run a class about infinitives. You could also tell your friends about the class and ask them to come if they're interested. Thank you very much, sir. You are welcome, and it's my duty. This conversation is an example of a consultative style of communication. Notice how light the dialogue is. It is light, but it also has a sense of formality compared to that of a casual style. The consultative communicative style can also be present in regular classroom discussions, doctor to patient, lawyer to client, counselor to client, group discussion, teacher to student, and expert to apprentice. In this style, the speech is generally unplanned since the speaker considers and uses the participation and feedback of the listener in the subsequent responses. The speaker will supply background information while again, the listener participates continuously. In the consultative style, or any semi-formal conversation we may be involved in, having the ability to listen very well will make the process much more meaningful. In the consultative style, we need to listen carefully to the other person to come up with a valid response. However, do not just listen with the intent to reply. Make sure to listen for understanding as well, because this will make you a more considerate person. After all, just like what Brian McGill said, one of the sincerest forms of respect is actually listening to what another has to say. Now for our exciting activity, here's what we will do. I will be reading out a statement and then you will try to tell me whether it is casual or consultative. Can you do that? I'm sure you can. Let's play COC, casual or consultative. Here's the first one. Hey, yo, dog, how you doing? I'm just gonna grab lunch. Wanna come? Hop in. If you think this is casual, then you got that right. Easy, huh? Let's try this one. Here are the instructions for your prescriptions. You have to take at least three tablets a day, once after every meal. Don't forget to drink a lot of water and to exercise daily. This sounds like a doctor giving advice. You're right. This is a consultative style. Great work. Here's another one. I think it would be better to talk to them so they won't proceed with the case. After all, it is just a minor incident. It will surely save you money and time. This is a lawyer giving legal advice. Casual or consultative? Correct again, this is consultative. Just like what we said a while ago, lawyer-to-client conversation utilizes the consultative style. Good one. Let's go to the next one. Hey man, check out my OOTD. It looks so sick, right? I happened to snatch it for a good price last week. OOTD, outfit of the day, that's slang. Therefore, this statement is exactly casual. You're doing a great job. Let's take a look at the last one. I think we have to work on the project as soon as possible. I will take care of the research. You will do the proofreading and Aaron will present the report. Are you okay with that? Good, let's begin. This statement sounds like students planning for a group activity. Is it a casual or consultative style? Consultative, excellent. Regular classroom discussions with classmates can be classified as consultative. Good one. Well done, Bright Minds. For that, you get a two thumbs up from Sir DJ and Dan. Keep in mind that the style you use for your conversations should be appropriate. In that way, you will not sound rude and absurd. Thank you very much for keeping up with us up to this point. You did very well in our game. You really are amazing. And that ends our episode today. That was amazing. That was so much fun. 
Time flies when you're having fun indeed. I hope you had a wonderful time with us. Your English learning buddies, Sir DJ and Dan. Stay tuned because in the next episode, we will talk about the third communicative style. Always keep safe, guys. Keep practicing and you'll be better in no time. And as I always say, never stop learning because life never stops teaching. See you in the next one. Bye!